Hey, good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. We are going to put in a new well uh, for the tiny house. I've been really working hard, you know, when I have the time um, to complete the tiny house, the shower, toilet, all of those things, and we're getting really close. I'd like to put that up on an Airbnb. You know, we are here right by the St. John's River, and it is the fishing, the bass capital fishing of the world. And I saw some reports that Bass Pro Shops are actually building a resort here. And what that means is that it will put this city on the map. And there's very few hotels here. So the Airbnb just might work here. The, the tiny house is so far from the main well that the pressure, I've got water back there, but the pressure is just not enough. So I need to get a little closer. Um, I'm, I'm going to put another well so in. We're going to start by just you know clearing the area. You see, there's a lot of pine straw here. Just want to get this out of here, get it a little bit cleaner. We'll pick this up and haul it away. And now I just want to see how many tree roots are right here because we need to start with a shovel and then go to the post hole digger afterwards. So let's just see. Yeah, you can you can feel it hit it right away there are a lot of roots down here they could be from the palmettos they could be from the pines but once we get through those roots we'll be able to start jetting the well with the pressure washer and we're using a mini jet nozzle and we should be able to drill this well in about an hour So we want to dig as far as we can with just a regular shovel. Now we'll try the post hole diggers. If you look closely, you can see that there's still there's still tree roots, even down you know 20 inches. But the post hole diggers will take them out. Always try to use your hand tools as best you can. Get as deep as possible before you start to drill. So take a look, you can see I'm down there about three feet. I already hit groundwater, <laughs> but that's all good. Notice this is peat moss mixed with sand and a little bit of clay. You can see the difference in the soils. You know, this here is halfway from that and here's the top. You can see a, a big difference in the soil types peat moss and clay and you can see it's full of water so nearly positive that we're going to get down 35 40 feet and be into a big pocket of water so the first thing we need to do is we need to make a drill bit we're going to make some teeth so we're just going to cut some little notches in here the guide shaft does a couple of things one, it gets us down there about 10 feet and it's wide open. But more than that, as we start to run water down through the next pipe, it gives a place for those cuttings to come back up to the surface. They need to drain away from the area. So we're making some teeth into this. It's like a little drill bit so we can just turn this back and forth. So you can kind of see how that looks. We've just got a bunch of teeth that we cut. And then when we dig this down in the ground, we can twist it and this will help force it down into the ground. We're going to do the same thing on the two inch PVC. So, can you see that? We've just got a bunch of teeth. Clean off those burrs, and we're ready to drill.
okay, with those teeth, I'm going to sink this 10 foot section down as far as I've dug by hand with the post hole diggers. Remember, always dig by hand as much as you can before you start to drill. Get as deep as you can. Shovel, post hole diggers, they work really good. But there does come a point that you can't go any deeper. So let's put this 10 foot section of 4 inch down into the trench. And I mean, you can see I can just twist it and it kind of sinks on its own. And again, I could twist this and make it go down, you know, ever so slightly. But when we add the water from the water jet, from the pressure washer, it'll push that sand out of the way and a lot of water will come up through the hole, but it'll also come up through the pipe. So now we need the derrick. We need the ladder because we need to get up on the top of that so that we can actually work and push this pipe down. So you can see why we need the, the derrick, the ladder. Um, we're setting it up just like you would a, you know, an oil rig, but we need to get up on the top up here so that we can put that jetter nozzle in and at the same time, we'll be able to twist this back and forth. We might need a big pipe wrench, um, and I've got that where we can just you know, twist that pipe wrench so that it digs down, and as it sinks down, it'll go lower and lower and lower. Hopefully, we can get this entire 10-foot section down into the ground. So let's get started. The mini jet is extremely powerful, as you can see. If I let go of that hose, it would just fly up in the air like a jet. So we're going to send this all the way down to the bottom of the pipe and then we'll kick on the pressure washer. And I'm going to speed the video up here a little bit because it's just kind of boring to watch all this. And you'll see this pipe go straight down into the ground. The total time to jet this was probably about, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. And this pipe just sinks down through there like butter. The secret is to continue to push that jetter. Let it get down to the bottom of your pipe and then pull it back out. Don't let it get stuck because it can get stuck. That's an important thing to think about. You can see how far we got down in just a few minutes. Okay, I think we're ready to sink our two inch shaft down through there. And we want to try to get down 30, 40 feet. And we know we're going to hit water because it's coming up already. but. We need to get that two inch shaft down there and then we send the one inch pipe which is actually the suction up to the sump to the pump and so we've got to sink two shafts first is the two inch and we'll put 10 feet in glue the coupling another 10 feet and just keep jetting until we get clear down as deep as we can get hopefully we can get down there like i said 30 40 feet um, we should definitely hit water some probably around 20 feet but let's get down deeper and then I'll put all that together and show you how well this actually works. So there's one more thing that we need to do. Each time we use this mini jet, we need to take a little straight pin and clean it out. It's about the only thing that really fits, fits down in there. And because there is sand that, you know, each time you turn it off, you get some sand down in these things. And if you can see it, it's really hard to show you because it's so small, but there's jets back here and you can take the straight pin and just poke a hole through that sand if there's any sand in there. Can you see that? We just want to clean each one of them out.
Okay, now it's time to go ahead and glue the next 10 foot section on. So let's do that. We've got our two inch coupling. Just hold it for a few seconds because you know that glue is still wet it just takes a few seconds for it to bond and you can see can you see the whole thing twisting now and it's actually I can still sink it now so that's all good we're ready to put the jetter back in you know it is so hot here in the early morning so you're gonna see me change shirts several times because you just get drenched and there's mosquitoes especially in the morning. So that's why I have on the long sleeve shirt. So now we're adding the third section that makes us 30 feet down once this gets in the ground. Okay, so I've gotten stuck three times now. And what's happening is that that jetter gets down below the bottom of the pipe and it goes sideways. And then the sand, of course, is pulling the sand back out. It's filling around that nozzle and it's really hard to pull out if you saw me pulling it out. <laughs> um, show you, we're gonna keep on going. Don't give up. If you believe you can do something, I guarantee you so, can do it. I've got plan B already set up, but let's see if we can twist this back and forth and cut that down into that clay, get through that layer of clay. I don't know how thick it will be. Um, it's probably a couple of feet thick, but once we get past that, we should get down into that soft sand again. And that's where all that big pocket of water is. Yeah, it's going down slow. So we're digging down pretty good. So, can you see down in there? I don't know. But there's no water rising and there's no water coming out, coming up. So I know that I'm down into a big pocket of water and all the water that I'm giving it from the pressure washer is now going into the ground, into that pocket. Can you see that? Take a look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. This is almost like a rubber. And that's what's down there at the bottom of this well right now. And it's pretty thick, it's pretty hard. You can see it kind of hardened off. Underneath of that, you can see we've got really nice white sand. So we're close to that water pocket. But this stuff, I mean, it's just, look at that. It's like a clay. In fact, I'll bet you that, I sh I'll take that back. This is a clay. We have hit clay down there and it's pretty hard. So I haven't tried to, let me pull this off. I haven't tried to put the pipe wrench on here yet. So I'm putting the pipe wrench on. I haven't really tried to use the teeth. I'm gonna try to take this pipe wrench and twist and push this thing down as deep as we can go. See if we can cut a little bit. Okay. I'm going to try to leave that two inch shaft down into the ground and had so many comments about well, why don't you leave the two inch shaft down there and then sink down the well point. So I thought I would give this a try. We're going to go ahead and push down this pipe. This is a 20 foot section of one inch pipe and it already has the foot valve on it. So I will go ahead and try that. We'll push this 20 foot piece of pipe all the way down and see what happens. Way up there. Get it started. Hopefully it'll sink all the way down. I hear the water. Can you hear it? And what I want to do is put my safeties on here. So it doesn't drop down any further. Unfortunately, this pipe got stuck, totally stuck in the sand. 
So where we left off yesterday, man, it's hot out here, is this got stuck. This didn't go down all the way. We're going to have to try again. So I'm going to pull this out. I don't know if you can hear that. It's got lots of water. Here's our check valve. And here's our well point. Perfect. And what we're going to do is a new idea. We're actually going to see if we can't use the mud pump and push this pipe, a one inch pipe down there and just blow all that sand out because I'm pretty sure that it just filled up inside of that two inch shaft. And as soon as we get down there 30, 40 feet, we'll go ahead and reinstall the new well point down in and we should be good to go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and glue up two 20 foot pieces get some glue in the air get some primer on this guy and some glue on this guy and we're going to glue these two pieces together sorry i need two hands perfect so now we've got 20 feet and 20 more feet. That's 40 feet of one inch pipe. And we're gonna hook that up. We're gonna adapt that to the discharge of a two inch mud pump. So even though I'm not too worried about this thing leaking, I put some Teflon tape on here. This is a bushing that goes from two inch to one inch. And we're just gonna thread this guy right in here and then we'll glue We'll, sorry, we'll glue this guy on here and of course he's threading into the two inch adapter. So let me put that together real quick. Okay, we've got this all glued up and set up. You can see we've got a two inch, it's a threaded female that goes onto the discharge hose of the mud pump. So the water from the mud pump is coming down through here and it's all going to get really tight down through here and get some build up lots of pressure down in this one inch pipe remember that pipe is now 40 feet long goes all the way down there and what we're going to do is glue this last section up we're almost ready to set this up okay before i start let's go over this real quick so we've got this well point that's going to go down the very bottom of the well and can you see all the little slits inside of here this is how the water is collected. So the water is in the ground, you know, all around this pipe. You can see we've got quite a bit of that well point on there. It comes all the way up to here, so about eight feet of it. Then we have a check valve. We need the check valve so that the pump stays primed. And if you look closely, can you see the arrow? That tells me the direction of that check valve. So in other words, water can only go this way. And so I put together 10 feet of it, maybe 12 feet there, uh, plus the eight feet. So nearly 20 feet we'll start with, and then we'll glue the rest of it after we get it down in. So this is the one inch pipe, and I went ahead and cut a few teeth in the bottom, probably don't need to, but just, just in case we get stuck or something, I can twist it. But you can see this is the 40 foot one, and it's going all the way back. You can kind of see it. It's going all the way back to here. And we've got the discharge pipe coming from the mud pump. This is the discharge pipe coming from that mud pump right over there. And the trash can is our water supply to bring the water into the pump. I've also added the garden hoses. That's from the new well, by the way, the one we put in about a year ago. It still works great. And now that's where the water comes from but so anyways we've got inlet pipe adapting down to one inch so we can create a lot of pressure and as that mud pump pushes it out it should be able to blow all the sand that's at the bottom of that shaft out of the way and sink this 40 foot pipe down in then we're going to quickly pull that out and go ahead and reinsert the well point 
So the first thing I'm going to do is prime this pump. It won't take a lot. It does have to kind of fill up this hose a little bit. Things like that. So I know it works pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and put our cap back on there. Go over the starting procedures. And we're ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is turn the fuel on. You can see it. The little, little diagram, turn the fuel on. We've got a choke. We're gonna set that to start, set the choke. And I'm gonna leave this thing at full throttle to start it right there. Now we're ready to turn on the power. Then you turn on the power so that it'll continue to run. And we are ready to fire this thing up. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and bend this pipe. This is one inch pipe. They make hoop houses out of this stuff so you can see how easily it bends. And there is a two inch shaft down here. I'm gonna get it in there. There we go. I'm not worried about it breaking, anything like that. Let's just push it down as far as it'll go. And you can see there's 20 feet that's 20 feet right there so now we're going to fire up that mud pump and really push this water out of the way get this down another 20 feet then we'll insert that well uh, the well point down inside that shaft so once we sink this one inch pipe all the way down another 20 feet so that's 40 feet down then we'll insert then we'll insert the well point, if you can see the end of it, the well point will go into this shaft, pull this pipe out, quickly insert this before it caves in, and continue to plumb it up. I'd like to be down there about 30, 35 feet.
Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and put a pump on here. And hey, I have a great, a really cool thing. I found it on the side of the road. I don't know if it will work, but check this out. So check this out. <laughs> it was just on the side of the road. They were throwing it away. So I don't know if it works, but this is a Utilitech half horsepower shallow well pump tank system that means it has the air pressure tank already attached <clears throat> they already have it wired and they've got it going to inch and a quarter pipe <clears throat> excuse me so i'll have to cut this off and adapt it to our one inch and let's see does it have any pressure in that tank no so you know we're going to try it if, we, if it works, wow, great, we're going to save like 400 bucks. So let's go ahead and plumb this up and see what we got. So I think what I'm going to do is just cut off right here at this coupling. And we will plumb, you know, an inch, one inch pipe over with the 90 and tie it into this well pipe. And yeah, it's full of water. We're looking good. So I certainly hope that that well works. <laughs> After all this work and a free pump, well, you know, you just can't beat that, right? Okay, I'm going to use some all-in-one cement. It means it has the primer built into it. And probably going to re-plumb it anyway, so just want to see if it works. Put that on. Then I've got an old, already glued up 90, so I'm going to put that on here. Should be good. Now we just need to make this measurement and I've got a coupling for that. We'll go ahead and put the bottom coupling on there. I'm excited. I mean, is it gonna work? Do we have water and does the pump work? I just can't wait to find out. <laughs> Maybe you can't either. <laughs> Hopefully I cut that a little bit long so I can push it down onto the well pipe. In just a few more seconds, we're gonna plug this in and see what it does. Oh, it's a perfect fit. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> we need to prime this guy first. So let me do that. And the way I'm going to prime it is I'm just going to put the garden hose right in here and let it run back and fill up that section of the pump. Okay, the way I'm going to prime it is just I opened up this valve that they already had there and I'm just going to tilt it up and fill up this thing with water. I already brought the power out, so I'm going to plug it in. We'll see if we get any pressure or if it even works. <laughs> oh, it kicked right on. We got 20 pounds of pressure right away. Let's see if it'll build up enough pressure to shut off. Or it could be that regulator that's bad and they threw it away for whatever reason. But it's building up. We're up to 25, it's bouncing. Almost up to 30. Ah, 25, it's holding. Give it a second. 30 pounds. 35 pounds. Oh, and it shut off. So we are full. We have good pressure. It's holding in the tank at 30 pounds of pressure. Let me bring that GoPro over here. So you can see we're at 30 pounds of pressure and it actually did shut off. So the regulator's working. This tank's holding pressure. 
Now the question is, are we down deep enough to be in the water? Are you ready? Okay, here goes. Oh, it's dragging. Pretty muddy. Pretty muddy. Let's see if it cleans it up. Ah. We lost all the pressure. See all the pressure's gone. Still pulling water, but it's really muddy. Really muddy. I'll let that run, see if it cleans up a little bit. Oh, that sounds like that pump's dying. Pump's running down. That's probably why they threw it away. Okay, let's go ahead and let it build up some more pressure and uh, see if we can't pump this out. Well, let's let it run. Let's, let's let it run. Let's turn it off. <laughs> and let's see if that pressure will build back up. Yep, it's building back up. We'll get it to where it shuts off and we'll kick it back on again. Okay, so we got a lot of pressure in here. Let's kick it back on again. We need that water to clear up. Can you see it? So you can see our pressure gauge. It's slowly losing the pressure that's here in the tank, which is pulling that water up, even without the pump on. And you can see it, it's coming out pretty nice. Let's go ahead and open it up a little bit more. There we go. Pressure should kick on somewhere around 20, but you can see it's an old pump. It was free, you guys. It kicked on at 18 pounds. And the pressure is looking good. We got water and a free pump. You can't beat that. So we've got really good pressure coming out. You can see it just shooting all the way out here. Looking really, really good. Not bad for a free pump. That was on the side of the road, pretty rusty. But you know, I'll build a little cover over top of it and keep it protected but you know what this was the fastest i've ever drilled a well and that is using that mud pump and reducing from two inch to one inch and just you saw how fast that just dug right down through there no problem at all if this was clay i think it would do the same thing um, i put the teeth on the bottom of that pipe where is that's way over there but it worked really good Shuts off about 32 pounds, and that's assuming that gauge is correct. Remember, this is a used pump. I found it on the side of the road. Can't beat that. But let's kick this on. Look at that. Such beautiful water. Now, this is clean now. No sulfur smell. We're down there, what, 34, 35 feet? Found a nice pocket of water. We have water. Our pressure's dropping pretty quick. You hear the pump kicking on. You can see it picking up. We got water, Eureka! Eureka, we have water! <laughs> this is something you guys can do yourselves. I promise you, it's not that hard. It is a great DIY project. If you want free water, this is the way to do it. So if you're looking for the fastest way to get water, that by far is the easiest way. 
hook up that mud pump, reduce that two inch line down to one inch and let it just push all that dirt up and out of your shaft. I mean, that took me all of like 10 minutes, uh, truly 10 minutes, and we were ready to put down the well point. That was that quick. And now we're ready to go ahead and hook up our Airbnb, our tiny house. This is the shower house. We're going to be putting in a toilet, the uh, septic, all of those things. It's all gonna go right down through here and the leach bed, the drain fill is gonna be out pretty far away from here. That well is about 80 feet, 90 feet from where we're standing. So we're fine with that uh, as being distanced from any, any portion of sewage. It's all gonna be great. I can't wait to finish this and show you what we got going on. Maybe you'll come down and rent the Airbnb for a weekend. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.